I was born in Springfield, Mass., and I lived in Springfield most of my life, and then I moved to Holyoke with my grandmother a few years ago. I recently moved in with my dad, and now I live in Aguam, and I go to Aguam High. The transition has been hard because it's a different setting, and now I'm in a school where I know no one. The classes now, I feel, are a little bit easier because there's not as much pressure. A lot of the times they tend to teach us things that don't really show up on like MCAS or SATs. Most of the times they teach you the way they were taught and a lot of the tests have been revised so the way that they teach you isn't necessarily the way that would be best to answer the questions. We all deserve an education that we feel is best for us. I learned how to play the clarinet when I was in fifth grade, and then I was like, wow, this is like my best friend. Also in eighth grade, I started playing the violin, and I play violin to this day. I also play clarinet to this day in band. During the summer, I'm in a program called Holyoke Strings, and basically I just play violin all summer long. In eighth grade, my violin teacher told me about it, and I started going, and I've gone every summer since. But when I got into high school, I became an intern, and as I started getting better at the violin, I was teaching the little kids how to play, like little songs, how to string, how to strum. Last year, my therapist told me about this thing that they have called I Be Me, and it's basically a meditation retreat that you go on, and you stay for a week, usually in New York, and you just meditate with students from all over the country. During the meditation retreat, you really have time to like figure yourself out, I guess, or actually think about what you wanna do. Coming off retreat is really hard because you're in this space where it's really quiet all the time and you're like really into you. It's a week without social media. And then to come back to social media, it's just, it feels like you just have a lot of drama again. In November 2012, I was on Twitter, and I seen this post that this girl had posted of a guy in a girl shirtless, and on the guy's chest, he had written, society says okay, and the girl's chest said, society says not okay. And I think that's really what made me want to become an activist. After seeing that post, I like started looking up why females are getting treated differently than guys. And then I found that there was this thing called feminism. And I was like, wow, there's a word for this. And that's when I put it in my bio and I was like, I'm gonna become a feminist. My experience with Holyoke High School is the following. I enrolled maybe two months and I got expelled. I want to cry. <laughs> Why are you going to cry? No, basically what happened was I was a uh, young kid, thought I knew it all, and uh, started school. Uh, but after school, I was outside uh, doing what I shouldn't have been doing. I was smoking a cigarette out in the front waiting for the bus or waiting for some friends. And uh, the vice principal... Uh, just approached me and asked me uh, why I was smoking and to get rid of the cigarette and... Being smart Alec, like, you know, we are when we're younger. Um, I might have responded a little harshly and he ended up putting his hands on me and I pushed them back and uh, basically I got expelled because of that. But during the whole incident, I noticed that maybe about five or six feet away from me, there were probably about six or seven white kids smoking and he didn't say anything. Classic. So that's really my experience with high school. It wasn't very good. I wasn't perfect. But in the meanwhile, while they were just trying to fit me into uh, some kind of program or some kind of school, and I just had a lot of idle time on my hand and uh, started getting involved in things I shouldn't have. Made some bad decisions, resulting in incarceration. It definitely helped form how I started behaving after that. You I did get my GED. Oh, good. And I did take uh, two years of college after that, later on down the line, so. Nice. I'm no dummy. At Holyoke High, we started a uh, restorative justice group called Palante. Um, and basically, we tried making our school a better place without 
using violence. There was a group called the Young Lords that um, came together and they were fighting for the same thing that we're fighting for. We named our group after the first newspaper that they put out. I remember one day we had someone that was in the Young Lords come and meet with us and he told us about how he knew a 13 year old boy who was bouncing a ball in the in the hallway and he got arrested for it and went to jail for seven months and he was only 13. Um, it's kind of hard being in groups like that because a lot of people are like you guys are fighting for nothing they don't they don't really think that there's anything that we can do because we're young but there's a lot we can do I know a girl named Desiree Rodriguez and she told me that we were gonna have this walk out and then I got a message on Twitter saying that we were gonna get taken over by the state and that we weren't gonna stand for it we were gonna protest Um, the day of the walkout, when we were trying to leave the building, there was people everywhere, teachers holding us back, yelling at us, administrators in front of the doors, blocking the doors. I couldn't get to the first floor in time, so I was just like, okay, I have to leave the first exit I find. So I was on the third floor, and I was going to leave the door, and a teacher grabbed my arm and pulled me back. And at that moment, I was just like, you know, you need to let go of me. My best friend, when she left, she went to the front and she said that the actual cops were trying to block the doors, but I don't know if the cops are like holding people back or anything. We walked to City Hall. We were gonna have the mayor of Holyoke, Alex Morse, come out and speak to us about why we we're getting taken over. He came out and he started talking and his excuse for the reason why he could only give a two minute speech was because they were in a meeting. That was super important. They want to hire all these people to come in and they don't even know what it's like to be there themselves. They think they know what's best for us, but they don't. They think that we don't care for our education. We do. We will fight for it because it's our education.